St. Louis, Missouri, site of the 1904 Olympic Games. But today, it takes us on the road to London with the Visa Championships on the campus of St. Louis University. Can a former Olympic gold medalist get back to the games? Nasia Lukin must prove today she's Olympic ready. A former teammate looks to get back as well. Alicia Sacramone finds out today if she continues or it ends. Representing the new guard and doing it well is Jordan Weber, the national champion looking to defend and a world champion. But make no mistake, she's being pushed on the way to London by a teenager from Virginia Beach named Gabrielle Douglas. NBC Sports presents the 2012 Visa Championships, and this is the last day. Today, we will crown a 2012 national champion and get the names of those who get to continue on that road to London three weeks from now in the Olympic trials in San Jose, California. Al Troutwick, Tim Daggett, L.P. Schlegel, Andrea Joyce, and this is one of the women we'll be seeing first, Nastia Lukin. She'll compete in only two events as she did on day one of competition. And what's her mission here today, Tim? Well, it's to get through a bar routine. That's what it comes down to. But, you know, after watching her in training, I don't know if she's going to do the whole thing. I think she's going to not do her final dismount. And I, I believe, though, that Marta Crowley is going to push her through regardless. Only a disaster would take her out. How about this? At the end of day one, we had a tie all the way down to the thousand spot 60.65 for gabby douglas 60.65 for jordan weber ali raisman's part of the mix as well so we've got a national championship that is not a concern for nastia lucan that's not her deal she's just trying to show marta caroli that she is ready to take the next step to the olympic trials we start things off in a big moment for alicia sacramone she's got to do the same thing on the vault exactly and this is her specialty world champion on this Healthy, she's been taking a lot of deep breaths. Yeah, she's, you know, I, I have to say that her comeback has been remarkable. I think that Marta Crowley has recognized that as well. She's been simply amazed that she's here in the type of shape that she is. But as Tim mentioned, this is Alicia's specialty. If she's going to make an impact for the team, it's here on this event. And impact is what it's all about. Those landings are devastating on your body, especially when you have injuries at the World Championships just about eight months ago. Right immediately before the game, she was doing a tumbling pass on floor and she completely ruptured her Achilles tendon had to leave Tokyo, was still part of that team, got a world gold medal for it, but it has been a long and difficult road back for Alicia Sacramone. She's changed the number. This is a different vault. Why two vaults for her? Well, the only reason that we'll see two vaults is in the Olympic Games or World Championships, if you want to win an individual medal, you have to show two different vaults for two totally different vaults. And she'll show us one this way. She'll do a round off, half turn onto the board. And it was beautiful, great in the air, not what she's capable of doing. She can actually add another full twist, and I'm sure she will. She just wants to show the selection committee, primarily Marta Caroli, that she's back, she's healthy, and she can fulfill all of her potential roles for Team USA. We're going to have all the great stories, one after another after another in this first rotation. You see, you see the left leg as well. I spoke with her coach, Mihai Breschin, before the competition began, and r the day before day one of competition, Alicia was doing a balance beam dismount and landed a little bit short, and she said, he said she got really nervous. It was almost panic. She felt something in her knee. It was a little bit of a scary moment, I have to say. We watched that dismount, didn't really know if she was going to carry through with the first day of competition, but I have to say, it didn't even affect her at all. Alexander Raisman with Mihai Breschen. And he told me that they did all the checks. Uh, they had everything looked at. He was very confident that the knee was fine. 
Here's Bridget Sloan on the uneven bars. She too is trying to get back the former world and national champion from Pittsburgh, Indiana. And, and only five names. Yeah, and That's this is it. a big event for Bridget Sloan because this is a specialty, you could say. She had the fifth best score in the first day of competition. If there's an area where the Americans are slightly weak, it would be here on uneven bars. And I have to say, after Actually, watching... Actually, I think they're, they're, they it, it are is. weak, you well, know, potentially. And watching Bridget in practice for the entire week, I wasn't even sure she could put together a full bar routine, and she surprised me on that night one of competition. But this is... Much harder. She's tired. There's no question about it. And just being a little bit off can make bars go crazy hard on you. First release. She had a little bit of difficulty in the warm-up on this one. And connects right down to the low bar. That's the trickiest part of her exercise. Now she'll do this inside skill right here. This is better than night one. It's beautiful. I think this is what Bridget does so well, and it's part of the experience she's had on the world stage. Remember, she was an all-around world champion. This is experience. I'm still here. And I spoke with her coach, Marvin, right before the meet began, and he said, this was our plan. We just want to come to Visa Championships, get through it, and then we'll peak for the trials. And now Rebecca Bross is coming back from a horrible knee injury herself. Yeah, it was uh, just about a little less than a year ago at this same meet, the Visa Championships, she landed a vault and dislocated her kneecap. Of course, had to have major surgery. You can see that it's a little bit taped up that right knee closest to to you on the screen and as a result rebecca has become a two event specialist uneven bars and balance speed oh boy. this event has been giving rebecca difficulty and there's another what, what those are is their slight mental adjustments doubting yourself just a little bit and you show that you look maybe a little awkward or not prepared for a position. And why that is important is because Marta Crowley is on the other side of the gym watching, and what she has said is if you're going to be a specialist, you better be awesome. And you know, Rebecca, when she was younger, was known as one of the toughest competitors out there on the floor. But every single acrobatic element that we've seen from her, not everyone, but they all seem to have these little balance checks. Let's watch right here, that one dead on. But the diffi most difficult move for Rebecca is right here. It's one of the hardest dismounts in the world, and this has caused her such grief. Yeah, it's been, it's not been good. Oh, golly. And she holds on to that one, takes a big bounding step forward. Better than it has been. And she actually did it well in the warm-ups. But what the judges are looking at, there, her coach, Valeri Lukin, obviously Nastia's dad as well. The judges are looking for a great oh, landing, and she was too squatted and too bent over. It'll be a big deduction. Here's Allie Raisman from Needham, Massachusetts. Does a big fault. Maximum score, 16.5. Whoa. And once again, al almost a carbon copy, I would say, of night one. And, you know, a good vault. Coach Mihai Breschin, you know, he wants, he wants to see something a little bit more powerful than that because she doesn't really get off the table as quickly as she could. She has to tuck her body a little bit, which is, of course, a deduction. They're all deductions in gymnastics. 15, soon to turn 16, and that's a must in the Olympic year from California, Kyla Ross. She was the top bar worker in the first day of competition, scored a 15.5. What makes her so special are beautiful lines that she will show off on this event. Now watch this transition, very difficult. Sometimes has a little leg separation. Right there, you saw it, but very nicely done. 
and Marta Caroli loves this girl. We were chatting with her before the meet began, and you know, we were asking about individual athletes, and we hadn't gotten to Kyla Ross. We certainly hadn't forgotten her, and she was like, well, what about Kyla Ross? Right, and it doesn't matter that Kyla hasn't been part of the World Championship team. She feels she has proved a lot to her. Great start. And with routines like that, she grabbed the lead of the competition day one, and then Marta Caroli watched her make two of her biggest mistakes on the floor exercise, and that cost her that lead. But she's still coming into this day one in fourth, and the top eight guarantee a spot in the Olympic trials. Sloan, 14.95. Raisman, a 15.3. Rebecca Bross, a 13.7 on the balance beam. Well, that was really a great start for day two of Kyla Ross. Exactly what Marta Caroli expects, demands. <laughs> Just keep proving to Marta Caroli that you can do this type of gymnastics time and time again. She, she said they're all ready gymnastically, but it's now a mental game for all of them. They need to carry this through right through to the Olympic trials. Thanks, you got it. Now to Gabby Douglas. Remember, she and Jordan Weaver are tied. Yeah, it's amazing. With all that gymnastics, and they they come out with the exact same score. And if you tie the reigning world champion in the all-around, that means you're pretty darn good. And she is everything and more. Just has to show no tentativeness on beam and... I was going to say, starting on this event for Kyla, for Gabby Douglas, would prove difficult because she's very jittery on balance beam, and I wasn't so sure this would be a great start for her. Wow, another big skill right here. Of course, when you fall from the apparatus, it is one full point. Just in gymnastics terms, where tenths and half of a tenth of a point can separate, it's disastrous. And this has been the one area that Marta's been a little bit concerned about, is her focus, her mental state of mind, because this young lady, she can do routine after routine in the practice sessions, but it's, at this point, the pressure of competition. She just has to learn to stick. And you know, ironically, Gabby says that she loves beam the most. She says that she loves it, that you have to be so exact, so precise. But it has been the place where she has struggled. Her dismount here. Pretty good after that fall, but you know, that was just devastating. So Gabby Douglas awaits her numerical fate. I can tell you that Kyla Ross did well, 15.35. So she might be moving up. And so this is really her first big test. Back layout, step out. She struggled on this at the qualifying meet for this event, the Classic, just, you know, I mean, I have seen her do that while we are in St. Louis, maybe 30 times, and it's easy for her. Now to the de facto leader at this point, Jordan Weber. She was thrilled with her bar set in the first night of competition because she had struggled in the previous two events at the American Cup and World Championships actually last year where she's had some problems in the handstand position, but she was very good on the first night of competition, the best that she's been in a long time. This is tricky for her. these two combinations on the low bar. Nicely done. And here is where it all gets very tricky. Very good handstand in this transition. Little bit of an arch, but that's good for her. Release right here. And she has only the dismount, which is actually easy for her. She had some extra motivation for today. I don't think she liked sharing the limelight on day one of competition with Gabby Douglas. 
And the important thing to remember when you see a major mistake like Gabby Douglas in the Olympics, three gymnasts per event, all scores count. You get a mistake like that. You have to count it. Without a doubt. Now, Nastia Lukin. Again, only two events. She's the old guard at 22. And you know, she was good on beam. She did a very nice job. Marta likes her competitiveness. So she just needs to repeat what she did day one here, and then, of course, be much better than she was day one on her specialty, the place where she earns her ticket to London, the uneven bars. It doesn't get earned right here. One thing I have nope. a little bit of a break here, so she won't get this connection, which is what balance beam skills are all made up of, connecting one skill after the other. She will lose some valuable points there. Yeah, I think she's going to lose it on both sides of that skill, too. Obviously, the one area where Nastia excels is her beauty, the grace, the flexibility, the artistry. I've missed this. Oh, God! And when you put your hand on the beam, huge deduction as well. Now she has to get her composure, and she sometimes is right near the end time-wise, and you hear that bell. Yeah. So that error, she has to hurry here, and She's endurance gonna... is a factor at this stage of her training. Nice job on the dismount. Well, Tim, you saw her return to competition two weeks ago in Chicago. There are three weeks to the Olympic trials. What have you seen in terms of improvement, which would lead you to believe that three work weeks is worth a shot? Well, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, she did a better beam routine than that. And she did a better beam oh, routine than that in day one. This is going to be a very disappointing score. She's going to lose tense for those connections and then grabbing that beam. She's not going to like the number. But really, what she needs to show is that she is on the right track, dad and coach Valeri Lukin, he has always had a plan, and she says, I just believe in the plan because it's worked every other time with my dad. So she just was way off to the right side, and like I said, you can't touch the beam. And that's a skill that Nastia has pr probably been doing since she was seven. So the karma on the beam is not good right now. Gabby Douglas got a 14.1. Jordan Weber okay on the une uneven bars at 15.05. The score is taking a while, and that's usually not a good sign. Steve Rybacki and Marta Caroli, they are going to, at the end of the competition, go into a room and pick the names that will be added to the eight. Actually, there's a third member of that selection committee. It's the athlete rep. You have to have one in cases like that. It's former Olympian and medalist Taryn Humphrey. Her team, where she continued, is represented here. Gage. Let's go to Andrea Joyce. Al, there was a uh, scary moment here about 45 oh, minutes before the competition cool. began. Michaela Maroney was warming up on floor, fell back after a tumbling pass, laid on her back for about a minute and a half. She was helped up escorted out of the gym into the hallway, and that's where um, USA Gymnastics team doctor Larry Nasser did some preliminary concussion tests. They then decided to take her into the medical room. She was in the medical room for a while, and we should point out that she was conscious through this whole time. Her parents were with her, but after they examined her a little bit further, they did determine that she did, in fact, show signs of a concussion. So as a precaution, they decided to take her to the hospital for a CAT scan, and we should point out that they have already petitioned that Michaela Maroney be sent right on to trial. Al? Okay, Andrea, so night one, she was great in vault, which she has been. She's the world champion on vault. A little unsteady on the other three yes. events. Mm -hmm. And 
as Nastia waits for a long time, and that's not a good sign for her score, uh, you would think that Michaela Maroney will be able to go to San Jose. Absolutely. There's no way they're going to deny that peti petition. There's absolutely no way. She's the reigning world champion on vault, and really that was one of the main reasons that the USA dominated, but that number right there, the same score that we saw from Gabby Douglas, not a good start for Nastia. That brings us to the end of the first rotation. We'll have much more to come in St. Louis. The Visa Championships are brought to you by ADT Security Services. Always there. And by Visa, supporting athletes and the Olympic Games for 25 years. There are thousands and thousands of moms and dads who have grainy video of their little girl doing just what Kyla Ross is doing here. Yet it is daring to imagine that it leads to this, arriving at the national championships. That's where Marta Caroli notices everything you do. Wow, and that was great. This is excellent so far. Yeah, that'll raise a few eyebrows. Yes, it will. The routine itself, fantastic. And then she found herself as the youngest competitor in the lead of the national championships. Everything was fine, on the verge of great, and then this happened. One misstep, one mistake. That can't happen next time. To compete in such big meets, it is hard to keep your emotions straight. That's what you have to do, though, as Marta Crowley watches. A mistake, that happens, but she doesn't want to see it become a thing as Kyla has advanced to this much bigger stage. Yeah, but this lady right here, she loves Kyla Ross. She loves the look. She loves the work ethic. This young lady, no question, going through to the Olympic trials, and she is in the driver's seat of her own Olympic quest. If she just holds it together, she's on your Olympic team. Kyla says that she hasn't really felt the hype quite yet, but I think that looking around this arena and feeling what's happening right now, she just might. Jordan Weber has the lead. Allie Raisman has moved up, trailing by two tenths. And Kyla Ross is in fourth, six tenths behind. Not in the top eight. Some of the former Olympians hoping to get back. Back live at Chaffetz Arena, St. Louis, Missouri, for the 2012 Visa Championships final day. Back to Gabby Douglas, trying to shake off what happened just a few minutes ago on the balance beam. She had a big, she has a big floor exercise plan, but I think at this point for Gabby, what's important is she has to keep her power and her emotions in check. You know, this is what oh so frustrates us. You look at Gabby's mom right there, this woman right there, because when Gabby Douglas is on, she is phenomenal. She is world class everywhere, but she has to get her emotions under control. 
Exactly what she needed to do, though, is come right back out. That is the absolute best tumbling, best executed floor routine I have seen Gabby D Douglas ever do. She the landings every landing. were phenomenal. And in a weird way, Marta might be happy she had the mistake on the beam because she saw how she responded after it. Now back to Allie Raisman. She could be thinking of a national championship here today. She's only a couple of tenths away. In fact, that was one of Allie's goals coming into these championships. She said, I sure would love to leave with a national title, whether that is in the competition as an all-around gymnast or on a particular apparatus. But what this gal can do is compete and stay steady. She keeps her head in the game. She's you know, very I, good at that. I talked to her coach, Mihai, before the meet, and I said, you know, even just a year ago, when you looked at her, she was such an incredible competitor, so composed, but it, it didn't really look like she believed it. And he agreed with me, and I said, I, it looks to me like she does now. And he said, yes, I believe she does. She can feel the power, he said. And this event, uneven bars, it's not by any means Ali's specialty. She will just be looking to survive and get through the event. I think she's made some improvements but there are certainly some errors in the routine on the form. See, the legs are apart there, but also the positions, the handstand positions are so critical. You have to just rock those out. Another release right here. Hooked feet, as we talked about in that cast. The legs come apart, and that handstand, very short. But it's what Gabby... Yeah. It's what Allie Raceman does is she just hits routine after routine. And this is why Marta loves her so much. She would like to have this experience and leadership on her Olympic team. Yeah, you want someone that you can count on. And I said to Marta, I said, so, but you can't really use her on bars. And no, in the team finals, three up, three count. They don't want to use her, but she said, when she goes for the team, that first day of competition, she hits all the time. Gabby Douglas, 15.1, just a shade better than she did in the first day of competition. And those scores get added to these scores. Kyla Ross on the balance beam. Again, she needs to just do what she's been doing all week in practice. Hit a routine, that's what Marta wants to see, how you perform under pressure. That'll be a few tenths right there. She's gonna lose a connection and also get a couple of deductions. I mean, it's just crazy <laughs> what the judges are, are looking for in a routine like this. Basically, if you at home can see anything where she looks like she wobbles just a little bit, every time that happens, the judges scratch that paper and those deductions, they add up very quickly. A great beam routine has just about one point in deductions. That's a great world-class beam routine. She's a great sticker. Oh. Now, even though she hit this set, she'll be happy, but there will be one area, that connection at the very top of the routine. She won't be happy with that, nor will Marta. But it was, it was a very strong routine. <laughs> that one part that we talked about, but overall, I mean, that would certainly do just fine at an international event. The one thing that's frustrating is I have seen her all week long stick this double back somersault so many times. She just rushes it a little bit, doesn't take her time, could have stayed down with those knees bent a little bit, a little longer. She might have taken a step back, but I think there was a shot to stick that. So she waits for her score. Allie Raisman does one-tenth better than she did day one on the uneven bars with a 14.2.
So now what does uh, Jordan Weber do on the balance beam? Well, she can be great here, and almost always she is. But it, there were two areas in the first day of competition that Jordan said afterwards she would want to improve on. That was her vault landing. And it's also these very crucial connections that she relies upon on this balance beam routine. They were new connections since the World Championships, but she really needs to spend or pay special attention to these connections. We'll point them out. It's crucial that she connect them fluidly. Tim, numerically, this was her weakest event day one. Would you say that's pretty consistent? No, absolutely not. She, um, at the World Championships, where she became the queen of gymnastics, she struggled on uneven bars and then went right to balance beam and was just as rock solid as you could possibly be. Mentally, she's as tough as anybody I've ever seen in gymnastics. And where she exceeds expectations in that area is on balance beam toughness. Here's one of her big connections again. Wow. A little bit of a problem there right off the top. And her this second. Is the, and that's too long. She was supposed to keep moving. I don't think she gets either of those on either side of that skill. There's one more that will be coming out in a little bit. This connection right here. Which she decided not to today. And you know, we're talking, we're talking tenths of a point. Um, so this is still going to get a great score. It's just gonna be two to three tenths of a point lower than her potential. And it goes beyond worrying about a national title. It, it, it's about Jordan looking ahead to possibly winning the Olympic Games and the all-around and those types of deductions just won't fly at, at the international stage. Just your dismount. She'll do a, a layout somersault with two and a half twists. And she does that so well. Very well. You know, she, golly, she took the smallest little hop though, but what she does well is she has a great body position when she's landing. You contrast that, we saw Rebecca Bross, who has struggled on her beam dismount. Jordan lands completely upright, no bend in her hips, and just a small little absorption in her legs. And every time we go to the practice sessions, this is what Tim and I are watching. These beam routines, they do three to five routines. And so that right there was supposed to be connected much better to these skills, but sometimes, if they don't connect them, they'll get back up on the beam and do them six, seven, eight more times. And here is that dismount. Beautiful, look at the body position when she lands. That totally extended in her hips and just a slight bend of the knees on the landing. They can take no deductions on that except for that small hop forward, which will be one-tenth of a point. Kyla Ross on the balance beam, 15.0, so she stays in the mix. Now you look at Sarah Finnegan, who has many, many fans in this building today. Here's Andrea Joyce. Well, she does, Al. She's not exactly a household name, but she grew up in the St. Louis area, so she's got about 50 family members and friends in the audience cheering her on really, really close to where she competes on her weakest event, which is the uneven bars. Now, I talked to her dad, Don, and he said his message to his daughter was, have fun, be focused, but he was a little worried that all that extra noise might be a distraction. We should point out that on day one, her bars score was a little bit lower than expected. We'll see if she can use the friendly energy a little bit better today. Yeah, Andrea, she's about 50 feet away from the first row of that section, and I think the Finnegans have the whole section. <laughs> and she, we talked with her before the meet began, and she is just adorable. She is so soft-spoken. I had to sit a little closer to her. <laughs> everything you ask her, I said, so, Sarah, do you think that are you ready for this competition? Could you have used a little bit more time? And she thinks, and quietly she says, yeah, I do feel pretty good, but <laughs> I, I think I could have used more time. <laughs> Very sweet, but you know on her profile, she says she would like to win the all-around competition at the Olympic Games. Oh, well, that's good. Jordan Weber, by the way, three and a half tenths better than her first day balance beam, a 15.05. And they actually, you see that 6-2, they gave a lot of connections that I didn't give. 
but what you'll see in this bar routine. If there's a place where she doesn't excel, it's on the bars, right, though. Right, but she has what I was going to say. She has the most exquisite lines and such a beautiful look. And what, what that means is on an international stage, judges just eat that up. They absolutely love it. But she's young, a little inexperienced, and that's the big question mark. Can she hit? Now watch the releases. That one was... Oh, boy. Oh. And that is bad. That is one full point whenever you come off of any of the apparatus. And what I was going to say, which contributes to this problem, is if there's an area where she really struggles on unevens, the release skills that she have, they're a little bit low. And so she doesn't have as much time to see the bar and grab the bar. Like, watch here. That one was better. But she works at very, very hard at hitting those important handstand positions. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, it was really good after that point, but nothing she could do could erase that fall. I think they're going to have to do some parenting tonight. Yeah. But she does not make this Olympic team with this routine. Watch the, this is called a ginger, just a little bit low. I really don't gone. know. I don't know why she couldn't hold on to that. Both hands were on the bars. Inexperience. Well, that's a quick turnaround right there. I think I would have, <laughs> he went from, oh no, to she's okay. She's, yeah. good Can job, you know. So we'll take a break and see what has happened with the challenge to Jordan Weber's lead to become back-to-back -back national champion and the dream of Nastia Lukin to get back to the games. Sean Johnson's gymnastics career is now over. Let's find out more about that by going to Andrea Joyce. Well, Al, I think you'd agree that it was a very sad day for gymnastics fans last Sunday, exactly one week ago, when Sean made the announcement that she was retiring from competitive gymnastics. And I have to ask you, how emotional was it for you and for your family? Um, it's been an emotional roller coaster. I think my parents were a little happy because it makes them nervous when I'm out here. But um, it's, it was sad for everybody. You know, it's been my life since I was three years old. So it's hard to shut that door. And you had such a close relationship with your coaches. I mean, were there tears? Was this a tough decision? It really was. You know, it's been hard. There's a lot, a lot of tears in the works and everything, but the outpouring of support and um, just overall encouragement with this decision has been overwhelming, and it means the world to me. What was the hardest part? I mean, it seemed watching you that your heart was there and your passion was there, but you just couldn't get that knee to cooperate. I'd say that was the hardest part. Is I, I was all in it. My heart... My mind, everything, but my body just was saying no the entire time. And you can only, you know, ignore it for so long before you have to give in and do what's right for, for you. So as you're on the other side now and you watch some of your teammates from 2008 still trying to make this team, your thoughts about what you've seen from Nastia as your heart goes out to her? I, it does. You know, there's such amazing talent out here, and especially seeing some of the 2008 teammates, you know, I can relate to all of them. And... It makes me so nervous watching. I just, I, I wish them the best. Well, you know it's harder to watch than it is to compete sometimes. <laughs> Definitely. I'm, like, shaking. All right. Well, best of luck. I know you've got a book coming out next week, and uh, we, I'm sure we'll see you down the road. Thank you so much. All right. Back to you, Al. Olympic gold medalist, Sean Johnson. Marta Caroli checking out everything from her front row position. But Jordan Weber still leads this 2012 Visa Championships. Okay, in the last Olympics in Beijing, there were six team members, and now there are five. So fewer gymnasts, injury becomes a major factor, and we go on to the third rotation. Gabrielle Douglas in third place on the podium after the second rotation, and she will vault now here in Chaffetz Arena on the campus of St. Louis University. We can tell you that Jordan Weber's lead is now .65 over Kyla Ross and .9 over... Gabrielle Douglas. Now on the bars for Denton, Abigail Valle. She is just waiting for 
the green flag to get going. You heard her mom in that package of moms talking about the pressures that, that go into this. Okay, here we go. And she can actually really do this vault well, but it's all about the preparation. Sometimes she's a little bit off to the right on the board, and if she is, she struggles. If she's square, it's great. It's gonna be great. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's her third vault that she's completed. The first one was at American Cup. The second one was on day one of this U.S. championship, oh. and that's number three. <laughs> she's feeling good. <laughs> she's probably thinking, only one more to go. That was a big vault. Extremely clean, a very good landing. That is going to help her quite a bit. Remember, vaulting is one of the potential highest scores. The maximum score she could receive there is a 16.5. Allie Raisman lost a little footing in the standings. Right now, halfway through, she trails by 1.05. And I put Allie up on the board because of one reason, her mental toughness. In fact, she had the second highest score in the first day of competition. I'm not sure a year ago I would be thinking that Allie would be one of the three beam workers, but she has certainly proven herself over and over again. I think she deserves it. We were talking to Ali earlier in the week, and she's kind of in that hurry up mode. She's getting a bit hyper. She wishes the Olympics could be tomorrow. She is so prepared in her training. She's had tons of competitions under her belt, international, world stage. If it could be tomorrow, I bet she'd be on that plane. And this is quite a routine. It is error free. Did you just say that? Yeah. Well, no, the judges right there uh, is her very first balance check. The judges are going to find plenty of deductions. Let me assure you of that, Al. But the landings on the acrobatic skills and the landings on the leaps have been great. Sometimes she doesn't get to a full 180 degree split on some of her leaps, which they will take off for, but. This is the highlight of the routine, isn't it, Tim? This dismount, the hardest in the world. She typically does it perfectly. Oh. Whoa, she was going for a stick. Allie, of course, trains alongside Alicia Sacramoni, the 2008 Olympian who is trying to make her comeback. So here's the second place 15 year old Kyla Ross down by 0.65 to the, to the defending national champion. And Kyla said in this first year competing as a senior, she said, Whoops. I feel like I've been here before. Well, this is the moment now for her. Just put day one in the rearview mirror and move on. Like out of bounds never happened. Well, it's dad's birthday today, and that is his present right there. 
big, powerful music. You know, that piece really carries Kyla throughout this routine. I love it. There's a lot of dancing. Is there enough gymnastics? Uh, yes, there is. It's, it's not her absolute best event, but she is a strong competitor on all four events, and she just showed again that she can deal with that pressure. Okay, good. Okay. Rest, try to think about the ball, how to do it. Okay. She's moved on to the next event. Oh, yeah, always. Her coach, Jenny Zhang, right there. Thank you. Also, Howie Liang. This is where she had troubles on night one. She stepped out of bounds with a big step, a three-tenth step. But here, just a little slide back, one-tenth of a point. Yeah, you could really see her concentrating throughout the routine, especially on those landings. <laughs> you need to videotape that, Kyla, and show it to Marta over and over again. <laughs> Good job. From now until the plane takes off. Well, we've got some big scores to report. Sorry. Gabby Douglas got a 15.8 on the vault. Which is, is a very big number. That's five and a half tenths better than day one. And Ali Raisman on the balance beam got a 15.45 which is also a huge number. Jordan Weber on the floor. Biggest test comes right here. Two flips, two twists. Great. That routine to me tells you that Team USA is going to be in great shape. They are. They are tremendous. No question they're the front runner, the leaders in the sport of gymnastics right now. And I tell you, you don't become a world champion unless you are super tough. And this young lady right here, as mom is so ecstatic, she probably can't even contain it. She is showing routine after routine, just chipping away to prove that she deserves the right to go to the Olympic Games. It's a no-brainer. Jordan's become so comfortable with this exercise. One thing that I love throughout the routine is her focus, her eye contact throughout the choreography. But hey, check out this first tumbling pass. As Tim said, two twists, two flips. I like the power. Look at that. It's solid. Just a small little slide back on the landing, but gigantic air on that skill. Kyla Ross got a 14.6 on floor exercise. Not a huge score, but five tenths better than she did day one. The picture becomes clearer. So many different emotions and desires in the building right now. A father and his daughter. The Olympics were part of his Russian blood and part of her American blood. She went to Beijing and conquered it all and now because it's so much a part of who they are, they want to go back. And they're not sure where they are right now. Jordan Weber, the leader here. A mother agonizing through every move. She looked exhausted when we saw her. But Jordan has been the jewel of the building today. 15.25, exactly what she did day one. So that's the consistency we're talking about. 
Alicia Sacramoni has the Olympic rings tattooed on her neck. It's a big part of who she is, too. She wants to go back. But she wants to go back for a different reason. Nastia Lukin, she was the queen of the ball. She won the biggest prize that you can, the women's all around. And Alicia's experience in Beijing was completely different. She was on that team to deliver on the balance beam. Just think of how many dreams have died on that darned apparatus. And instantly, she is off the beam. She, she told me that when you think about your dreams coming true, you just don't ever envision a mistake. She was certainly a completely different athlete on that very day. And you know, sometimes you're on your own in, in the Olympics, but that was a team thing. Well, it was. That was during the team competition, the second to the last event. The problem was she followed that up on floor exercise where she's great and very stable, and she sat down one of her tumbling passes, and it just, it fueled her, her redemption is what she said. It's, you know, she just felt like she couldn't end her career that way. Since that time, she became a world champion on vaulting. But, you know, the biggest stage, it doesn't matter what anybody tells you, Al, if you're a gymnast, there is one thing that you want to do. You want to go to the Olympic Games, and you want your dreams to come true there. And it did not for Alicia Sacramoni. She got a medal. And she did. She won a silver medal for the team, but. Individual performance, that's hard to, to take. It's hard to accept. So we've talked a lot about the number five this time in the Olympics. We've talked about Marta Caroli not wanting a, a one event specialist. Where do you think Alicia believes she fits into this? Well, she has to be just phenomenal on this event, and she has to prove to Marta Caroli that mistakes like, hap like what happened in Beijing aren't ever going to happen again on beam. And she's great and stable. Marta knows she can rely on her involved. That's, that's an unquestionable. But can she, under the glare of eyes like that, can she pull it off? Marta Caroli, she's, she's the dream maker, but she's also the dream breaker. And basically, if she doesn't perform every time and, and prove herself, that's all Marta wants to see. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't play favorites. She doesn't care if you've been an Olympian before. It's just, what can you do for me now? Little bit off on that, but just a tenth of a point. And that was great. At this point, she's looking pretty much the same that she looked in the first night of competition. Of all things, she tied her teammate, Ali Raisman on this event. Steps out of that leap. It'll be a slight deduction. So coming up on this dismount, this is where she had a little bit of a problem in that practice session, but had no problem in the first night of competition. Or in warm-ups today. It's a double pike somersault. A very good landing. I, I say Alicia Sacramoni. I'm trying to read lips. Did you get that? <laughs> I say Alicia Sacramoni proved her point here without a doubt. Okay. Boy, it just worked out that we didn't have the music from floor exercise during that. We could hear everything. Next time me and you are going to do Zumba, Zumba before being. Oh, yeah. Come on now, Bill. So this mount is the exact same one that she fell on in Beijing. It's still 
befuddles me that she's she still doing, does but the she same take, thing. But this is what Alicia's all about as well. She takes some risk with that mount, and it's hard. She needs it. Lands a little short on this, and the staggered landing. You see that one foot in back of the other? That, I believe, is to protect the knee that she kind of stung a little bit the day before the first competition here at the Visas. She'd like to have that feeling at the Olympics. Who does it? I was trying to watch I don't. I mean, I was going, I was like, I really don't think that Alicia could have done much better here at all. I could hear the music, I was like. No, I like waiting for Allie, and I'm like, yeah. I like when I'm watching game, I don't like to look at like them. I like to look at the camera, because it makes me like nervous. I know, I don't watch the music. Somewhere in Kylo's mind is the thought, hey, I saw you on TV do really <laughs> good stuff really? in Beijing. Alicia gets a 15.1. It's a tenth less than she was on day one. Okay. That can be made up by some of those little steps we saw. Other Beijing memories come to mind from Bridget Sloan. You get old quickly in gymnastics, don't you? Yeah. The year after the Olympic Games, though, she was the world all-around champion. Rebecca Bross from the United States, a very close second. Since that time, though, she, she rarely, if ever, has competed a full all-around. She did that in day one of the Visa Championships. She started off great with uneven bars and did a very nice job there, but struggled on balance beam, scoring in the low 13s, which isn't really going to help her cause a lot. And this certainly wouldn't be an event that they would look at for Bridget as well. This wasn't a high scoring event for Bridget Sloan on floor exercise, but she is so very polished, especially in the choreography. Good tumbling up until the end, and she almost stepped out of bounds. But that is not going to bring in one of the higher scores of the day. The music means the end of the third rotation. Just one more performance for everyone here at the 2012 Visa Championships. Jordan Weber trying to go back to back. Here in St. Louis, that woman right there, Jordan Weber, is poised to win her second consecutive national championship. But her lead over Gabby Douglas, who has come back from a major fall off the balance beam. She's only back by 0.15. Now, over on the uneven bars, Nastia Lukin is about to show us what she's got on the uneven bars for a second time at these Visa Championships. Tim, what did you see night one? Well, it wasn't good. She struggled at the top of the routine, and then things got really bad right when she's transitioning from the high bar to the low bar. Way too close. Watch. She has to do this circle around the bar. It wasn't planned. And what that did, 
not only is it a big error, but it also added a bunch of gymnastics and a lot of physical effort, and she's just exhausted. Not in the shape she needs to be in, so she doesn't do the dismount, smacks her feet on the bar. Which was a very smart move on her part, and as we've learned, Nasia's only been working this routine for just a little over a week and a half, and that's really not a lot of time. And yes, that was Chelsea Memel helping out the officiating here in St. Louis at the Visa Championships. She and Sean Johnson both said goodbye to gymnastics in the same week. What does Nasty Lucan look like on the uneven bars? Could it possibly be a final chance to impress Marta Caroli? Back live in St. Louis, moments away from Nastia Lucan on the uneven bars. You're looking at the national champion, Jordan Weber, trying to do it again on a pretty good apparatus for her to do that. So she does that really tough ball that only a handful of gymnasts can pull off, and most of them come from the United States. It has a 16.5 maximum score. This was the vault that gave her the edge at the World Championships last year in Tokyo. Very nicely done. A little bit cleaner than we've seen from Jordan. The step forward, yes, but that was a great, great ball. It's the only place to improve, the only place. Do you hear that? Good first step. Yeah. I would agree. I think Jordan knew that too, though. Okay, here we go. The great all-around gold medalist from four years ago. Got a silver on this, and a lot of people thought that she should have won over her Kashin from China. And she is just hoping to be a little bit like she was in Beijing. Day one, right from the top, she got off balance on these full spins on one arm. She'll do a bunch of them in a row coming up right after this move. Oh boy, and she has, she has changed her routine. She's a little bit confused and maybe she wasn't confused, but she did things out of order. And it could potentially be Hit very the bar. tired. Hit the bar right there, and this is where the problem was, but today that's okay. Oh, jeez. And she is going to be very tired. I wouldn't be surprised if she does not no. do a dismount. She's not gonna, she's gonna ju just do a, a laid out somersault. She might even just do a laid out flyaway. Yep, yep. smart. But that was not, that wasn't good. Both know it's not what they wanted. Now what? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> decision time. Now on the ball for Cincinnati, Amanda Chatter. She got a little bit off balance once again on one of those full spins. Changed her routine all around. That's a tough group to impress, and they weren't. This is one tough sport. And so right off of the top, as I said, she's struggled a little bit since she's been here on these full spins on one arm. They'll come up right here. This one's pretty good. And then the other one, watch, she's way over to the side at the end of this. You see that way over on her left side? And she's supposed to do another one right there, but just does a half turn. She was supposed to do the skill she's going to do now. So she added a whole couple of elements, and this is where she was supposed to go. And she's supposed to do her release right there, which she does. And 
as you see, this release is fine. She smacks her foot on the bar, though, which is a deduction as well. You can't touch the bar. I bet there are a lot of gymnastics fans who are confused in this building right now. Challenge for exercise for TK Gymnastics, Brandy J. Will she be at the Olympic trials in three weeks? Meanwhile, in what may be a coronating move, Jordan Weber gets a 15.9 on the vault. Valeri Lukin, dad first, coach second, and it is painful. And I tell you, with that routine, two missed bar routines and a miss on beam tonight, what I believe is going to happen is he's going to sit down and have a conversation with Marta Caroli, and she's going to be very frank, and he'll be frank back, and it'll go something like this. Do you think that three more weeks, Nastia can show that she's much better than she was here today? And I believe that it'll come down to whether or not he says yes. In three weeks, she'll be even more ready, and we should give her another shot. But I believe it's in their court. They're never going to admit to that at USA Gymnastics, but I think that that's what's going to happen. Bridget Sloan. Bridget Sloan. She'll do a very easy vault here. Her coach Marvin Sharp said that they thought they could just show that they were getting better here. And it's a bit of a risk, to be perfectly honest, because I, I believe that Marta Caroli expects them to be just about there, especially for someone like Bridget. And... Uh, I don't know if she made her case enough. If you joined us along the way and you're wondering where is that great vaulter, Michaela Moroni, in warm-up, she was injured. She fell flat on her back and was taken to a hospital. We haven't gotten any further word on her condition. Certainly, we, we wish her the best, but she was awake and, and talking. And back to the hometown girl, Sarah Finnegan from St. Louis, Missouri. And you will certainly fall in love with this young lady on this exercise. Just exquisite lines, beautiful choreography. She's a delight here. But she has to erase a lot of bad mojo, a fall on bars, and then a big struggle on beam. mistakes we saw from Sarah today is just really lack of experience at this stage of the competition. It's huge pressure. A lot of athletes say the Olympic trials process is even more daunting than the Olympic Games, and I think it got to her a little bit tonight. Now Kyla Ross, she's on her way to the Olympic trials. Bridget Sloan, however, with a 14.15 on the vault, is not in the top eight. She's going to have to get one of those Marta Caroli invitations to the trials. Now, Kyla played it a little easier in the first day of competition. She was told by Marta Crowley not to go for her most difficult vault. See what she does here. And Sticks with the same game plan. Just a little bit more gymnastics. Jordan Weber may have this locked up. We'll take a break here on NBC. One final chance for Gabby Douglas here at the Visa Championships. Rebecca Bross, a 
bronze medalist on the uneven bars at the World Championships. That stat, is very that stat is a very important one because it shows how she potentially could have an impact for this team. She has the ability to be great on the uneven bars. And interestingly, she was the third best bar worker in the first day of competition, third best score. Release here in combination, nicely done. Another release right here. A little bit close to the bar, but. Just to dismount. And a good job from Rebecca Bross. Does that change anything, or do you think they had their minds made up before today even began? Well, I think that Rebecca Bross should and will get an invite. I believe that, she, that that'll happen. Um, you know what really throws a lot of craziness into the air is the injury of Michaela Maroney because they won't know it, how severe it is and with her not in the mix it complicates everything because Marta's first team in my opinion included a Michaela Maroney and so when you take her out then you got to start building that puzzle all over again and then you go oh we were really good here, but we're not quite as deep. And what does that mean? We can make it up in other areas. Allie Raisman, who's had a good day, gets set to finish it off on the floor. For an update, we go to Andrea Joyce. All right, Al, the word we get from Steve Penny is that Michaela Maroney is still in the hospital. She did have a CT scan, and the results of that were negative. That is good news, meaning that she did not have any brain damage. They are pretty confident, though, that she did suffer a concussion. She's still there being evaluated a little bit further. Also a possibility of a broken uh, bone in her nose. So if we get anything else before we go off the air, we'll let you know. Okay. Steve Penny is the president and CEO of USA Gymnastics. And he will be providing us with the names in addition to the eight finalists here today who will go to the Olympic trials three weeks from now in San Jose, California. We'll have four days of coverage on the NBC networks. One of them will be Maroney, without a doubt. And this young lady right here is going to be in the top eight. She's going no matter what. been spot on. She has been unfazed by it all, just out there doing her thing. <laughs> that was a, a huge ovation from Marta. Marta. Yes, that was off the charts tumbling. I think that is far and away the hardest floor routine being done presently in the world. She might get her national title on that event. She might also get second place for now. Here's Gabrielle Douglas needs a 
huge home run here. She needs a 16.05 to take the lead from Jordan Weber. Possible, yes. Her start value, if she does everything she's planning, is a 16.6. So that's the maximum she can get. But she has ha got to be just about flawless. Every handstand, and that one right there, will be at least a 10. Woo! She can fly. And now watch this combination right here. Right to a handstand, beautiful. Now release, and then right to the low bar. Great. There's another one, that pirouette right there. I would say that one was about three-tenths of a point deduction because it fell so far from the handstand. That's a bar routine that this team needs at the Olympic Games. And that is why, even with the fall or the mistake on balance beam, as she gets a hug from Liang Chao, even with the, the mistake, on balance beam, her bars alone punch a ticket to London, in my mind. So we await the final score to see who the national champion is. Is this possibly a 16.05, Tim? I don't think so. I mean, it's uh, my guess is it can be in the 15.8, 15.9 range, but. So now, Taryn Humphrey on the right. Marta Caroli, Steve Rybacki, Steve Penny, the president and CEO, are going to go in a back room. We're going to take a break and get you updated. But before we do that, let's go down to Andrea Joyce. All right, Al, I'm with Nastia Luca. Nastia, clearly not the day that you had hoped for. The look on your face after you finished your bars routine, I have to ask you, were you starting to have second thoughts about this whole comeback thing? Not one bit. I have absolutely no regrets. Just the fact that I'm here competing at a national championships after three years off. I'm very proud of how far I've gone. Obviously, I am very disappointed, and I can do better. Um, well, I guess time will tell, and we'll see if I can make it on a trial. You had talked the other day about showing flashes of the old Nastia and sparks of the old Nastia. Do you think you showed the committee enough to have them invite you to trials? Um, I hope so, but I guess I would understand if not. You know, my scores weren't really showing that these performances would help the team in any way, shape, or form. But, um, you know, I hope I get another chance, and I think three weeks can help. How much better can you get in three weeks? You know yourself better than anybody. I honestly think I can get a lot better. You know, I've only been doing a bar routine for about a week, so I think in three weeks it can be a lot more stronger and a lot more consistent. Okay, good luck. Thanks, Andrea. Al? Andrea, Gabby Douglas just misses. It was so much like what happened in the men's final yesterday, but it misses being a repeat of that by just a couple of tenths. 15.85, and now they can look forward to being teammates and pulling for each other instead of trying to beat one another as they were today. For a national champion, Jordan Weber, it's a repeat. Still to come, the names of those going to the Olympic trials. The Visa Championships are brought to you by ADT Security Services, always there. And by Visa, supporting athletes and the Olympic Games for 25 years. Jordan Weber wins her second national title by a gymnastics whisker. Two tenths over Gabby Douglas. It makes you think back to her fall off the balance beam and how that could have dramatically changed things. On the podium as well, Ali Raisman by .95. Andrea. Joyce has the champion. All right, Al, of course, it's uh, awfully nice to defend a title, but I'm thinking for you, is there bigger significance to this national championship with the Olympics right around the corner? It's definitely so huge. This is the Olympic year, and this is the last competition before Olympic trials, so to have a strong competition and go eight for eight, it, it just felt amazing, and I'm ready to move on to trials now. All right, congratulations. We'll look for you down the road. Thank you. Eight for eight. That's thinking like Marta Caroli thinks. No major mistakes, hit every routine. We go back to Andrea Joyce, who's with Steve Penny. All right, Steve Penny is here with me now and has the list of the uh, other young ladies who are invited to the trials. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we've uh, added the following athletes to the national team and invited them to the Olympic trials. The ninth and 10th in the all-around, Brenna Dowell and Bridget Sloan. And then we've added Alicia Sacramoni, Rebecca Bross, 
Anna Lee, and Nastia Lukin, and we've accepted Michaela Maroney's petition. So all of those athletes are added to the national team after the top eight and will be invited to the Olympic trials. You all came out of the room pretty quickly. Was there not much discussion? This was pretty clear cut? Well, yeah, it makes it easier when the athletes take care of things on the floor like they have. And I think that everybody's shown that they're ready to go and, and we're ready to move on to the next step of putting this team together. Okay, thank you, Steve. Al? All right, Andrea, no major surprises there. Everybody on the bus. Yeah, they, We're going to San Jose. Yeah, they took just about everybody that, that was in contention at all. I think there were too many question marks for Marta that she would like to see two more full days of competition before she solidifies that team. Well, I think that was good news for Nastia Lukin. And Michaela Maroney. Made uh, right, yes, make, uh, she made it back. She's already tweeted that she's okay with a small nasal fracture and a mild concussion. It's great to see her smiling. Yeah, she is. That's good news for the USA because she is, as I have said over and over again, a person that most would say is going to be on that team. So our coverage of the Olympic trials begins June 19th from San Jose, California, and continues through June 23rd on the NBC Sports Network and on NBC. So look forward to four straight days of coverage as we get ready for the London Olympics next month. Now, after rain and darkness shortened the French Open final, we remind you at 7 a.m. tomorrow, the NBC Sports Network brings you the conclusion of Nadal and Djokovic. Tomorrow night, the Devils go to make it three in a row and force game seven presented by Geico. It begins at 8 Eastern on NBC. Tonight, starting at 7 after your local news, it's an all-new Dateline, followed by an all-new episode of America's Got Talent. Congratulations, Jordan Weber. For Andrea Joyce, Elfie Schlegel, and gold medalist Tim Daggett, I'm Al Trowick. Good night from St. Louis.